Hey guys, welcome back. This is going to be part 12 of the bubbles. We are going to get this um, new wiring harness from Golden Age Arcade put in today. Um, set the monitor on the floor. Um, we'll power it up, see if we get some... Uh, um, if we get something on the screen and it works, you know. Um, we're going to have to take this battery, uh, these... Uh, double A battery thing off of here, off of this board, and we're going to put a, uh, a, uh, three, what is it, I forget what size battery it is, but we're going to put a little, uh, like a big watch, watch battery in here with a little holder, and, um, that's used to save high scores, I believe, so we're not going to use double A batteries anymore, um, but first thing we need to do is start routing this wiring harness so that we can start plugging in the boards. And then what we'll have to do is unplug the power supply wire that goes from the power supply to the board set. And we'll check voltages on the power supply, which I'm, I know it's going to be good, the power supply, because the guy I bought it from rebuilt it. He did my one for Cinestar, and he does a really nice job on it. If you look up closely... I mean, look at how nice and clean and in order everything is on that power supply. All new header pins. Everything's been tested. All new fuses. Fuse holders are, they look to be new. Um, so, you know, all new capacitors. He puts these real bright green LED lights in there. So I'm really not too worried about voltages. I'm pretty confident, but we will still check it just to be on the safe side. Um, I'll have to figure out what the pinout is on that. I don't know if I have a owner's manual for this game or not. Um, I try to buy a manual for every single game I have that I put together especially because it's nice to go through the wiring schematic and figure out exactly where stuff plugs in and all that stuff. Because if you guys remember on my Sinistar video, I had accidentally plugged my um, volume pot and the speaker backwards. So it wouldn't work, but it did work. It didn't fry anything or anything like that, but I had plugged it in backwards, and I don't know if I just, I think I just screwed that up because I kept taking the board in and out, um, because I'm pretty sure I looked at the manual on that and where everything went. So let's uh, get set up here. We'll start popping on the wiring harness. I think we're going to start on the door and work our way into the cabinet. Um, we got to run the main harness still. We have to put in the power switch that goes at the back of the cabinet at the top. Um, there's quite a few things to um, put on. Let me go look. I don't know that I have a manual for this. I don't need the manual. I have the original card still on the back door of the game. So, this should have all the wiring that I need. I believe so. At least the plugs, I can go by the colors of wires and where they go on the plugs. Um, if you look here, this is the original paper that was on the back of the game. At least nobody took it off. So that we have, um, this is our main board here. CPU board. This is our ROM board. Interface board. So, yeah, we'll be able to go off of this. I'm actually going to rotate this around like this by rotating it like this now these three boards are in the right configuration as they are on the door so we can just look up and get these plugs set in the right positions to start off and then um we'll just kind of work our way in to the um to the sound board power supply and then to the power brick um, and then we can get the main harness that goes from the bottom of the cabin up to the switch and to the, to the, um, marquee light speaker, all that stuff. We can get all that put in. So I'm going to actually lower this tripod down a little bit. Oh, come on, cat. If any of you guys have cats, I'm sure you understand. It's a big jungle gym to them. All right. Take a drink of water here. And let's get this uh, main harness going. I'm hoping for this video and one more, if everything goes correct, possibly a video on the monitor, because I know nothing about it other than it did work, but it kind of was a little crappy looking, and I don't know if that was due to 
the last game that was in this cabinet or if it needs a cap kit or what so this is the harness for after after first is this one here this is our main harness that plugs all our boards in um it's nice he has everything usually labeled very well on all this stuff so let's see what we got here so on the main tag here it says bubbles upright main harness so this right here goes to the power supply that's our main power supply hookup so we need to work backwards from that well we don't need to I want to work backwards from that these wires I don't know where they go yet so let's see if this schematic actually gives us yes it does so our first plug farthest over to the left is considered I don't know if that's an I or a 1J1. It's either a 1J1 or an I1 or an IJ1. So let's look here. Okay, it's a 1. This is speaker. Coin. So this is backwards. This must go this way. Okay. IJ2, 4. Okay. It's 1J1. So 1J1 plugs into this first one. Now, you got to be careful on these schematics because not all schematics will, looks like this one does. But sometimes you'll notice a schematic will, will be like pin 1, pin 2, pin 3, pin 5, and it'll kind of shuffle back and forth. And you can get really confused because you'll think automatically it's pin 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. You know what I mean? So you'll get confused and think, well, why is pin 2 red when it needs to be green? Because you're looking at it wrong. Um, and I used to struggle with that all the time. And I never knew, could figure out why they would do that, but they do. So if we look here, we have three prongs. Then we have a block-off pin, okay? So up on here, we have three prongs and a block-off pin. So chances are it plugs in just like this without a problem. But let's just check to make sure. We have nothing in pin number one. Pin number one is NC, not connected. Let's go to pin number two. Pin number two is considered a black. Pin number three is black. Two and three are black. Four is our block off. And then we have five, which is gray and yellow. He puts these little sleeves on it so that you know it's not just a solid gray wire. It's actually a gray and yellow wire. So I know that that is correct. So let's plug this one in. We know that that is completely correct. Even though this is a new harness and he's really thorough about making them, I always like to check through this stuff because you never know. I mean, it's easy to flip something around and screw up. Especially like, look at this plug here. This is a 1J2, okay? We're missing a pin, second pin over. There's no block off pin in this plug. So that means this plug could be put in this way, which that's the way it should go because it's got a locking bar. But... I mean, technically you could put it in upside down, but so basically pin one on, on one J2 is red with an orange stripe. So we're gonna come over our schematic here and it shows pin number one, MEM port. I don't know if that means memory port. I'm not sure. Yeah, memory pro protect interlock, red and orange. That's pointing to pin one. So we are good there. So let's go over to to 2J2. 2 day 2J2. Kind of a tongue twister. Um, okay, 2J2. Does nothing plug into this one? It has to. Okay, this is our monitor wires. So here's our plug for our monitor cable. Okay, so we have our first pin number one is red goes red green blue ground so pin number one is red green blue ground um, so it's not going to go this way because these little prongs are upright it's going to go this way and the connector is different so it's going to go this direction it's going to plug in right here so there's our video plug in we need to tie these wires up I'm going to have to go get um, some wire clips it's the only downfall about these doors. I like them being on the doors, the wiring harnesses, but at the same time, the door swings all over the place, unless you prop it open with something. Okay, so now we're going to move on to 2J2. 2J2 is more than likely going to go there. 
Yep, 2J2. Pin number one is ground. Black. Which is right here, pin number one. And then there's only other one used, and there's a block off pin. So that goes there. So now we have 2J3. Which is right here, 2J3. Pin number one, once again, is black. We also have a block off pin, second to end. And you know what's funny is, look at this. 2J3. All right, sorry about that. Okay, so the 2J3, pin number one is blue. I was wrong. It's not black, it's blue. And that's what it says on the instructions here. So we'll plug that in here. It's pretty self-explanatory. Everything does have, like I said, that block off pin. Now this last one, pin number one is blocked off. This is 4J2. And this is, he has this labeled backwards. This is supposed to be 2J4. He accidentally put 4J2. So, no big deal. Easy that we know. All these are green wires, but they have different color striping on them. So basically, pin number two is green and red. So let's just verify pin number two is green and red, which it is. Key is in pin number one. Let's put that one in there. Okay, now we need to come around down to this last which I call, I think they call that the widget board or something like that. I don't know. But anyways, we need to go to that board, interface board. Um, we're going to go to 3J2, which is this first one here. 3J2, so this is 3J3. Is there not a 3J2? Might not be used. Or he has it marked wrong. So we have a 3J3. He has it marked 3J3. On my paperwork it says 3J3 is not used. I wonder if he mismarked it and it's supposed to be 3J2. So, seeing that this could possibly be marked wrong, I'm not sure yet. Let's go through it and verify it because we don't want to plug this into the wrong side. So, pin number one is supposed to be black on on 3j2 so pin number one is black let's go all the way over to the last pin the last pin is orange and brown so the very last pin is orange and brown so he labeled this wrong this is supposed to be 3j2 so as you can see you got to go through this stuff because and that's just a simple typo you know he has a label maker and he just accidentally hit a three rather than a two which it, i do it i mean everybody does it it's a little slip up but it's always good to check because if I didn't think any better and I didn't know any better and I didn't do a bunch of these games, I would for sure be plugging this into this side where it's not even being used. So we need to make sure that we go through all these and plug them in correctly. So now these boards are all plugged in. Let's go ahead and I'm gonna go grab a couple wire clamps I call them wire clamps. I don't really know the right term for them. But you can see there's holes here where screws were. We're going to go ahead and clamp these wires up here, just like this. And then we're going to bring them over into the cabinet. So let me go grab some of them, because I do not have them over here. I do have some screws over here, though, that we will be using to hold them onto the cabinet, which are just like the original ones that I was using yesterday, but they, are, they have a little slot in them rather than just being a Torx or a uh, quarter inch uh, bolt head. Okay, I brought two different sizes here. I brought ones that are a little bit smaller and a little bit bigger. So these I just buy in bulk on eBay. I'm sure Amazon probably sells them as well. But I bought those years ago. I bought literally bags of like a couple hundred each and they were cheap. I think like a bag of like 200 of these ones were like eight or $10. I mean, it's really cheap. If you go to Home Depot or Lowe's and you start buying bags of these, you're going to get like four or six of them in a bag for a couple dollars. So do the math. You get a couple hundred in equivalent to 10 to 20, you know, at Home Depot or Lowe's. So it's always better to buy that stuff in bulk, in my opinion, because in the long run, you're going to save yourself money, especially if this is a hobby you plan on staying doing for a long time, even if it's pinball, arcade, anything like that. You're going to want to have stuff like this. I definitely recommend it. 
So right now we're using the smaller ones because we don't have a huge group of wires going through these. Um, originally Williams ones I believe were white in color, but I have black ones so that's what we're using. I have some of the original ones but I don't have all of them and that's a little bit of my OCD there to where I just want them all to match. So I'm just going to go ahead and go with all the black. And don't be afraid to just let these loop around like that. Kind of let them just do what they do naturally. Stupid door's going to swing shut a hundred times on me. done there. Now, it looks like, if I were to guess, I could be wrong, we have a, a hole here. I'm guessing that holds this one. So that it keeps it from getting trapped in the hinge when the hinge, when the door gets shut. Tell you what, one of the hardest things to do about making videos on arcade cabinets is getting decent lighting to have make the video inside a cabinet is always dark it's always hard to try to position a light because um, if the lights reflecting off of something it's going into the camera if the lights over here are pointing upwards then you're getting the glare off the light and it's hard to see the video so hopefully they're not too bad for you guys um, I'm gonna do Stargate next I do not have room in the shop right now. Um, so what I'm going to do after I'm done with this game is I'm probably going to, I need to get that uh, that um, uh, PGA Tour Golf. I updated it. It's still sitting in my kitchen. I've had that game sitting in my kitchen for two months because I've been so busy. Um, I need to get that cabinet stripped down, take all the guts out of it, and put it into this extra slim cabinet I'm going to have in the basement. So that's probably going to be one of my next videos. Uh, I might even do one video on it this weekend because um, I want to get that cabinet out of there. It has a 27-inch CRT. I'm not going to use that. I'm going to use the 32-inch flat screen that is already in that cabinet that I have and um, go that way. So I just want to get that stuff done. Okay, so now this I know that this goes down to the main harness or the main power supply. So we need a loop up here. So we're going to use the next size up. And I can even go bigger than this if I need to. I bought like five or six different sizes of, of them. Oh, more than that. Probably about eight or ten. Nope, that fits perfect. So we'll put that one up there. So these are half inch because it's labeled half inch clamp. These ones are three eighths clamp. I think I have down to like quarter or three sixteenths or something like that. And I have all the way up to like one inch. So I have plenty of different sizes to go off. Okay, we got another one that's got to go over here. But we'll wait on that one. I know that we have this one coming down here. For now, let's plug this in. And this is the main board power supply. So I might need to rotate my schematic here my back door that sit down only you probably can't really see that in the camera I don't know if the camera's pointing over there or not but this is for sit down wiring harness only control panel power wiring so we need to get to this one down here so I'm gonna go down here and look real quick power supply board he doesn't have it labeled um, he has a blockout pin and pin too, so this definitely goes here. I, kn I know it does because I've done a bunch of these games. So that goes there. This one is 4J3, so I need to find where 4J3 plugs in. 
which I know it doesn't go to soundboard. Here's the power board right here. 4J3, pin number one is yellow. 4J3, pin number one is yellow. And it is actually labeled on the power supply 4J3. Um, these ones should have it labeled, but I don't see it. Sometimes the plugs cover them, or they might not be labeled on these ones. But anyway, so that's plugged in. So now I know that those two wires are going there. I need to run this down here, and we need three more clamps. They use There's three holes. I don't know if these holes were all used for clamps, or if it was from the last PCB that was mounted in here. But I'm probably just going to put all three in there. Kind of keep these wires going nice and straight down this side of the plate. And once again, I'm using the, the half inch ones. You know, I'm going to have to take these back apart and run this video wire through there and up. But that's okay. For now, I'm going to leave it dangling because I want to plug the monitor in on the floor. Okay, those are done. So now we need to plug in the um, audio board, whatever you want to call that. Oh, what do they call it on here? Um, soundboard. Um, this soundboard has this external port here. This would go for like um, Cinestar. There would be a ribbon cable that goes to another board for the speech board. Um, so technically this board is not really for this game. Unless Williams used this as just a general board. But I know that Williams did make some of the boards without this connector edge on it. This just happens to have it. That's how it came. Um, I bought it like that, but it's fine. It's not going to hurt anything. So now we need to wire up the tops of these here. So we have our first set of plugs here, which is uh, 10J3. So we have a 10J3 here, and we have a block off pin and, pull, and number one, and that's right. Number two, we have a green and red. So let's check here. 10J3. Green and red is pin two. Now these plugs on this board do not have the locking bar that locks these plugs in here. So you have to make sure that you put them in the right way because these can easily be plugged in like this, which is upside down, or it can be plugged in this way. But usually that pin that blocks it off tells you that. Okay, now we have the next plug over, which is volume control pot. And I know I had that wire. Okay, I threw one in the cabinet here. There is actually two of them in this cabinet. One's for Robotron, so we'll put that off to the side. I think I'd still need one for uh, uh, Ro uh, Sinister, or Stargate. Okay, so we need to plug this in. This is our uh, volume pot. So volume control Pin number one is black. I'm sorry, pin number one is red, which is right here, pin number one. And there, once again, there's a blocking pin in there. So it goes in this way. We're going to let this dangle for now. We've got to try to not let it hit against anything and short something out. So we will definitely make sure we tie that off before we power it on. So now we're going to go over to the next one, which I know is speaker. Um... This is control panel. That control panel has minimal wiring to it. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> uh, um, are these my speaker wires? I think they are. Okay. 
So we need 10J2 right here, 10J2. Pin number one is black and red. Pin number four is red and black. It's plugged in. Now we have the last connector over top, which is 10J1 power input. Pin number one is not used. Pin number two is gray and white. Here's pin number two, gray and white. On, on these boards here, so these boards over here, they're going one through, let's just say one through 10 from left to right. Over here, they're going one through 10 right to left. So you gotta make sure you watch your orientation on that stuff. Okay, so now we have that. This right here is for control panel. It goes right over to here. My control panel plug's hanging over there. So we'll be able to plug that in. Which I'm probably just going to go ahead and plug it in now. And there's actually a wire loom up here. So we already have that set. I can't reach it to plug in, but I will. This other plug hanging off of here is coin. So that's for the coin. Now these wires here... I don't know what these ones are for, to be honest with you. They're not labeled, and I don't know. Hmm. I don't know what these are for yet. This is labeled speaker. This braided one, and I don't have the other side to it. I wonder if I have it. I wonder if it came with this. Am I missing the speaker wires? I'm not sure yet. I'm going to have to look. If that's the case, it's not a big deal. I can make them. But I'll have to look around and see. Okay, so we have the soundboard plugged in. We have the power supply plugged in. Um, I think we're going to be missing a couple plugs. I'm not sure yet. Let me get this out of the way. Let's work on um, main harness here. You know what? I screw up. Yeah, right here. Bubbles upright coin door harness. Okay. Let's throw that in there for now. I think originally I said it was the uh, control panel, but I already have the control panel done. Okay, we're going to start on the bottom here. This is our main AC bubbles upright AC harness. This plugs into this plug down here. This is the only plug that's down there. And these have flat on this side, and then this side has like V's. A bunch of like V's, or you want to look at it this way, it's a W. And that'll match up to the plug in here. It can only be plugged in one way. You cannot screw this one up. And the colors on the one side are not going to jive with the colors on this side. They do change. So, don't worry about that. Now, this starts going up this side. There are some clamps already in the cabinet, so I'm just going to use them, even though they're not black. But we'll be all right. So, what I need to do now is spin around. Sorry, it's a little hard for me to get up. I got a bad knee. So, I want to start running these wires up the cabinet here. does it I forget I think so I'm gonna have to look inside the center star that I just did I think it goes up next to the monitor I'm not positive. and then it comes back over through here for the switch let me go look real quick I'm pretty sure okay yes that's how it goes 
So we got to come through here. The reason why they routed them like that is because the monitor is on a tray and the tray slides out of the cabinet. And if you have this big bulk of wires going up here, you're not going to be able to slide the tray out. So then we come up these loops here. Then we have to start splitting these off. Um, we have upper light. That plugs right into the back. Like that. Then we have these. Are, these are going to be on off, and these are our interlock switch. So our on off is right here. Interlock switch is right here. This is our monitor power. This. Um, I don't remember how this one goes. I'm gonna have to look and see. But this goes to our monitor power. So now we need to plug in this. Uh, On off switch, which I need to, these are soldered on. So, what I think I'm going to do is let me unsolder these and see if those terminals will just slide onto these. Let me go do that real quick. While I'm waiting for my solder gun to heat up, I know that this side's blue, this side's white and blue. So, I know that the center terminal is white and blue. So, we need to use, make sure we hook them up correctly. I don't know that it'll make much of a difference. Other than it might just work in the opposite direction, I'm not positive, but we'll put it back to where it should go. And also, this is the, the plate. Look how nice that tumbled. This plate goes on, mounts from the back side. So we technically can put this switch in here first. And this switch has a groove in it right here that goes into that spot right there. So the switch only goes in one way their nut on here and then I'm going to go on side of these wires and we'll see how if they go onto those spade connectors tightly or not so let me go do that now okay I got these unsoldered I think my camera might have been going for a minute there sorry we're gonna put the white one in the center here that's a nice tight fit might be all right Yeah, it's not going to go anywhere. Oh, shoot. Do it this way. Yeah, I'm happy with that. And we can slide this in. Screw this in. Four screws holding that plate on. Let me do that off camera. Can't see what I'm doing anyway, so and I'll come back. Okay, switch is installed. I need to go and find an interlock switch. I have the bracket for the interlock switch. I do not have the interlock switch, so I'm pretty confident I have one. I think the Williams ones were normally a black interlock switch. I don't have one of those, but I might. I don't know. Actually, the one in the Stargate, or the Cinestar is actually white. So I'm gonna go grab grab one. We'll get it put in here. We'll mount this I gotta take this plate with me because they do make different size interlock switches Okay, I actually just have a used interlock switch that looks to be in good shape um, And this is the original bracket. Um, I have some new ones. But I just don't know where I put them. I cleaned up the other day and I put them somewhere so I wouldn't lose them and I lost them so Usually what happens. So let's we gotta get this bracket on first. Before you put the interlock switch into it. I always use interlock switches. I know a lot of people that don't. They will um disconnect them or take the bracket and spin them down. I like them. I, I don't have a problem with them. But some people do. And on Williams games, every single piece of metal bracket, there's a ground strap that goes behind it. 
connects to everything. Even the power even the power switch. Because the power switch, if you notice, it only had two lugs. It only had uh, uh, your line and your and your neutral or your ground or your line and your neutral. It didn't have a ground. But the strap that runs through grounds it. Okay, now I know that on the Sinistar cabinet that the very bottom plug is blue. But there's six prongs on here, so I need to check and see which ones it's plugged into. Okay, it goes on the very bottom and then it skips the middle. So basically we go blue, very bottom, skip, white, and then these two blacks, which once again you skip. And I think the blacks don't matter which way they go, but I need to take this back off because I need to run the wiring harness through the bracket first. So we're going to go blue, skip, white, skip, or black and yellow, skip, and then the black and yellow. And we can slide this into place. Clips in. Okay. So now we have that done. So basically, I think we're just about to the point. I don't have any power wires that come from my power brick to the power supply. That's not good. And I got a ground wire I never hooked up. I'm going to have to look into this. So let me do some research on that and I'll come back. Alright, I am missing the plug. Somebody had cut it off of the power brick that was in the cabinet. I went outside and I grabbed the power brick out of the Stargate. The power brick on the Stargate, the wires are the same orientation and everything as the schematic on the back door. So what I'm going to do is make a wiring harness and we're going to have to solder it to the power brick that's in the cabinet. So it's going to be real important that I take my time on soldering it <coughs> in the right spots. Um, <coughs> what I'll have to do, I don't have a plug this length with all these ports. I do have these two that I can tape together and it makes it the same length as that. So we're going to take some of this cloth tape and we're going to tape these two together to start with. We could leave them individual, but by taking taping them together and putting a keyway in there, if I can find a keyway, we'll have it'll only go on one way then. So now essentially we made the same length plug as this. We need to see if I can find a keyway to put in there. I don't have all the correct wire colors, but if I take my time and I use this as my schematic to wire it onto the power brick, it should not matter that my wire, wire colors are different. I just need to take one at a time. I don't have, I have some of the wires are the right color, some are not. <clears throat> I'm going to go see if I can find a keyway real quick.
a key to put in there. And then at that point, I know which way this goes. So let me go look for that, and then I'll be back. Okay, I found one. Took a little bit. Went through a bunch of my old wiring harnesses. Just want to make sure I position this correctly. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven over. Seven over. I'm going to go verify that in the cabinet. Yep, perfect. So now we can start building this harness that we need to make. You never have anywhere to put a white. I need a tripod to put whites on. Um, I have quite a few colors. I have brown, tan, purple, some green, red, blue, black, and yellow. So I know that these two are, are yellow. One's yellow and white and one's yellow. But on my diagram here, they're both linked to 6.3 volts, which are these first two terminals. So we're going to use wire for, or wire, we're going to use yellow for both of those. We're going to make all our wires the same length. I'm actually going to make them a little bit longer than what that harness is. So we know our first two are yellow. Boy, you know what? I don't think the wire I have is thick enough. It's not. This is 16 gauge. I think that's less than that. We're not going to, I'm not going to risk that. I think it's more uh, like a 12 gauge. I wonder if it says. Does not say. So what I'm gonna do is I am going to end this video because I am not going to risk putting a wire in here that is not thick enough to handle the voltage. So whether or not I just go and buy one spool of thicker wire and I just make them all the same color wires and maybe I grab some different color tapes or something that I can put on each one to distinguish the colors that they're supposed to be. I'm not sure yet, but I need to look into that. I wish, I don't know if these say what size wire they are. Sometimes it'll label on there. 600 volts. And I might just make this harness off camera because it's going to take a little bit. But I can show you how I do it afterwards. I mean, I was half tempted to just take it off this power brick and then find another one. But I don't really want to do that. This plug's actually in good shape. It's not burned up at all. None of these terminals look bad. They're all clean. But I'd rather just make it. Just trying to think if maybe I have some of these wires this thickness somewhere. I don't know if the casing's just real thick or if the wire gauge is thick. Do they make, I don't think they make a 14 gauge. I think it goes from 12 to 16. And I wish this diagram would say what size they are, but it just doesn't. And I don't really see anything on these wires that say, I mean, it says 600 volt, VW-1. Style 10.05. Because these don't say any. No, oh, these do. These do say 16 gauge on them. I don't know if they make a 14 gauge wire. I really wish I could find somewhere that just told me what it was. I'll do some investigating on this. Uh, I'm not going to risk it. So, unfortunately, we're not going to see bubble start today. We're not today. Because I'm going to make sure that this is done correctly. And, uh, like I 
said, we need to wire in, we need to solder onto these terminals. And now that I'm looking at this, I think I have this in backwards. This needs to be spun this way, because all these are what we need to solder to. So we need to solder all these and one or two on the bottom. I cannot believe they cut those off. That's crazy. So yeah, I'm going to have to take this, rotate this, bolt it back in, and then we'll have to solder all our wires to this. But we're going to put them into the into the plug first, and then do that. I might video it. Um, let me figure out what size of wire this is. This very well might be 16 gauge, but it just looks like the 16 gauge I have is thinner. Now, whether that's just the casing, you know, I'm not sure. Um, I mean, it wouldn't hurt to use a little bit bigger if I can get it into the plug. So here's the new wires that he made. Oh, it says on it. 16, 18. Okay, he is, is using 18 gauge right here going up. And that's power coming out, but something's telling me that the power going in is thicker. God, I wish I could figure out what that is. Wish I knew what gauge that is. It might be just, it could very well be 16. I mean, you're talking wires from the early 80s that are, um, you know, wiring back then had a thicker casing on them. Just a better quality wire in general. Nowadays, everything's just, you know, let's shave a hundred thousandths off the thickness of the casing and we'll save so many pennies per feet. You know what I mean? For every thousand feet or whatever. You know, they always have a theory to how they can save a penny. And, you know, these very well could be 16 gauge and it's just a thicker, fatter housing. So, yeah, I'm going to do some investigation on that. Uh, let's end this video. This is part 12 of Bubbles. There'll be a part 13 and probably a 14 before this is complete. So, um, if you guys are liking what you're seeing, please like and subscribe. Any questions or comments, feel free to ask. Um, also, if you guys could share, that would be awesome. Uh, it'd be nice to try to get some more subscribers and some more views per video. And I, I'm not getting a ton of views on each video, which, you know, this just might not be your guys' cup of tea. You know, there might not be that much interest in bubbles. Or um, you know, who knows? But um, let's... Uh, so basically what's going on is, you know, it's big, almost the middle of October. Well, it's going to be in our week or so. Um, this is my really busy time. We do our light Christmas light show, which I have to start setting up in the next couple weeks here. Um, because once the weather gets crappy, I don't really want to be on ladders 20 feet in the air putting lights on the house. And um, we have to go to Tennessee still uh, to the trade show so that we can buy all the merchandise for our store for next year. So we have to do that too in November on top of getting the light show ready, which starts um, on uh, Thanksgiving night. And um, on top of that, I have a couple cars I need to get finished. Um, I need to get the basement back in order because we have a New Year's party every year. So I'm going to be scrambling a lot this year to try to get everything done. So you're probably only going to see a video or two a week on the arcade stuff on my other channel. I am posting a lot of videos right now because I'm working on finishing up the 59 Impala. Um, I have that 64 Impala I'm doing the body work and paint on. So that is in there. I have that pickup truck I'm working on. And I still have a bunch of other cars to do too. So that channel is going to get a little bit more focused right now um, on videos because that's what I need to be working on to get this stuff done. There's also going to be house remodeling videos. I really wanted to get this basement remodeled before New Year's, and I don't think it's all going to get done. I might be able to get an area or two done and just have to keep working on it through next year. Um, what I'll do is I'm going to put those videos on my other channel. When I do get ready to start doing, you know, the remodeling of the basement and stuff like that, I'll let you guys know if you guys want to go over to the other channel and subscribe or at least view the videos and see what I'm doing down here, that'd be great. Because with YouTube having two channels, I cannot put the same video on this channel and the other one. Uh, they will copyright it. So I don't, I don't want to get into all that mess. So um, those videos for the remodel of the basement will be in there. And I'm also having, I do some other videos of my regular job and working on other parts of the house as well. 
which is on the other channel. So I really appreciate all the subscribers and everything. I think I'm 1214, I think it was this morning when I looked. So it, that's good. You know, my views are really down. I'm, I'm only getting uh, maybe 100 to 200 views per video. Um, unlike the other channel, which I'm getting a lot more. But I understand there's a, you know, bigger audience for cars and, and home working on houses and stuff like that versus the arcade scene. But um, I appreciate everybody, everybody who comments, likes, you know, shares, subscribes, everything. I, I appreciate it. And I don't plan on stopping. There just won't be as many videos a week that I used to do for a while because I need to get other stuff caught up. So, all right, guys, that's going to end this video. Thanks for watching, and I will see you guys later.